I was trying to say, is it a youth sermon or is it just a regular sermon? So um, I want to talk kind of to everybody on today, but I want to come from a very familiar passage that's loved to be quoted in certain times. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22 and 6. And it's these words. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. The grass withered and the flowers faded away, for the word of our God shall stand forever. Brothers and sisters, just for a few moments, I want to kind of talk from the subject. Uh, God has an assignment for our youth. God has an assignment for our youth. Um, the question, there are questions that have been asked. Does God have a message for this generation? Is, is, is God just the God of the old folks? Does God consider or care about the young people? There are many who think that God is old-fashioned. They believe that, that he had a level of importance for the people, for those people in a different time, and, and they feel as if that he has no relevance for today's challenges that they encounter. But I want to suggest to you today that even in the difficulty of these times, God still has a message of hope and inspiration for us. Uh, it's evident that the enemy is out. He has his target set on our youth and he is out to bring distraction, destruction, doom, and dismay to them. If we look at the statistics all over the country on high school graduates, look how many who goes to college after high school, how many deal with teen pregnancy, teen using and selling drugs. Also look at the ones who are not able to comprehend what they read. Mm. We will come to the realization that uh, something is wrong and we will say to ourselves that it is time out and something has got to give. Because the truth of the matter is crime, drugs, gang fights, prostitution is raising at an all time high among our youth. And I want to suggest to you today that the present generation of our youth is no different from those in the past. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me in here. Uh, each had its own habits and its own ways of doing things, its own behavior that was frowned upon by the previous generation. Uh, well, let me go, let me see here. Whether you were held from the Charleston generation, which was consisted of the finger waved hair and short dresses and beads, or whether it was the boogie woogie generation of Cal Basin, Louis Armstrong, and the Jitterbug, each of those had its own peculiarities. There are some of you who came from the Bobby Sox generation. It was a time of the black and white shoes, thick socks, and standing up. Satan has a plan for our youth. Satan has a plan to gain new recruits among our youth every day. And his plan is designed to lure them into one or two of the subculture that's called either the hip hop or the new jack that, that goes, turns against the mainstream morals and culture and will ultimately destroy them. Satan, he has been very busy. Recent studies have revealed by the age of 16 the average child will watch 200,000 acts of violence on television. In addition to 33,000 murders, 20,000 sex acts, 35,000 naked bodies, and we'll hear 150,000 calls that will urge them to have sex, to drink alcohol, or to shoot somebody, or to get high. That's why you got the 
monitor what your kids look at. You got to monitor what they're listening to. These are the statistics for the average American youth. Now let's consider the fact that the African American youth spends 50% more time watching television and listening to the radio than all others. And it is not hard to understand the complexity of our situation. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, I want to suggest to you today that we need to make a shift and a change because they are not the next generation, they are the right now generation. We need to be leading them in the way that they should go. We need to be teaching them and training them in the way that they should go. But some things that we, some things will have to change so we can reach this generation. Some things will have to change so we can reach this younger generation. I thought you all young folk would at least say something right there. Because understand what what worked for the older generation, I'm sorry to say. It just might not work in this day and time. What, what worked back then, matter of fact, what worked for me when I grew up on is not going to work for this generation. My brothers and sisters, Proverbs 22 and 6 tells us the train of a child in the way that he should go and when he is old he will not be born. I do believe that this verse is the best verse known in Proverbs that dealing with training a child. There are all of these verses that helps us with such with, the, uh, uh, with training and raising our children. Here's one right here. Proverbs 23 and 13. It says, with not hold correction from the child. For if thou be as it will rob, he shall not die. <laughs> Y'all just listen. <laughs> If thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. I, I have, me and my wife, we have five children in total. I have three daughters and we have two sons. We did not have to teach them how to do wrong. I don't have to teach them how to lie. I don't have to teach them how to be sneaky. But I understand from personal experiences that the rod of the record will drive the light of the way. My brothers and sisters, we have to be careful at how we view our youth. We have to learn how to look at our children the way God sees them. Psalms 127.3 says, Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is His reward. See, most people see children as a pain and a problem instead of a blessing. And we, we have to start looking at them the way God does. I will suggest to you that yes, kids need time, they need love, and they need community. I know parents that they drive me crazy sometimes by not doing their homework, trying to skip school, staying up late on the telephone, not cleaning their rooms, not taking out the train, not doing their house chores. You need to keep spending time with them and caring for them and teaching them and not giving up on them and eventually they will come around. <laughs> Children are a reward and a heritage of God. Don't let them burn you out. We must understand that there is a difference between telling a child and training a child. Uh, there's a difference between uh, raising a child and rearing a child. That today what's happening, there is a lot of telling and not enough training, a lot of raising and not enough rearing. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Here it is, here it is. Uh, when the Bible says to train, that word train in Hebrew means to hate in. It suggests a picture of uh, when you're trying to herd some cattle into the pen. You have to guide them so they can all go in the same way so they can get inside of the pen. And as parents, we are held accountable to guide our children in the way that he or her should go. And you've got to begin training them when they are young. 
You can't wait until they become uh, teenagers. You have to start when they are in the creed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was reading several months ago. I came across a story that a lady, a mother, she wrote to the Chicago Times. She said she had a 17-year-old son that was just breaking her heart. He refused to listen to her. He was very rude, disobedient, coming home drunk, having some run-ins with the law, and she did not know what to do. She was seeking help, and brothers and sisters, ah, and so the, the, the reporter suggested to her, shrink him back down to 17 months and start over again. Oh, uh, y'all missed that. In other words, it's too late now that he's 17 years old to try to discipline him, to try to get him to do what he's supposed to do. You need to start training him when he is young. See, training a child has to be comprehensive and consistent. There are four areas to be reached and ruled. But I just want to mention two today, and I'm going to be out your way. The first area we have to get into about young people is their mind. Yes, sir. See, because the educational system and the, sec the educational system, our sec secular society is geared to focus the mind's attention on the world's priorities, yeah. philosophies, programs, principles, and measures. And the goal the secular education system is to prepare them so that they can succeed in a world so that the system or that the system sets the world's art, sets their sciences, their heroes, and their idols before our children. But we, as the children of God, as the church, as parents, need to get into our children's minds and get them to focus on the right thing. You know, three young men over in Daniel 1, they took them from their home and brought them over to another place. And they tried to get them to conform from what they knew. They tried to get them to conform from the God that they believed in to, to, to bow and to uh, worship this false God. They tried to change their diets. They tried to change their, their education. They tried to change, they even changed their names. But you have to be careful. You have to be who God has called you to be. You can have all the education in the world and you don't have Jesus. It doesn't mean nothing. You can have a mansion and it does not still feel like a home. You can have a king size California state bed with a pillow top mattress and you still can't get a good night's sleep. You can have all the money in the world and still be stressing out. All I'm saying is you got to keep your mind focused on Jesus. And as believers, we must lay a strong and firm biblical foundation for our children. Amen. But the Lord's been good to me. I'm from a town that didn't even have, does not have a stoplight. It got one stop sign and it got a bunch of holes in it. It does not even have a grocery store. It has a convenience store. And everything in there is just about expired. <laughs> but look at what the Lord has done for me. All oh, my brothers and sisters, I, I was going to say this at the end, but I'm going to put it right here. Most of you have noticed throughout the week I've been making a uh, certain and movements. Some of you all have laughed and some have understood. But don't let your condition uh, dictate or determine how far you can make it in life. Let me give you a testimony here. Uh, they said that I did not graduate high school, but the same ones that came to me that said I wouldn't graduate are the exact same ones that called my mama and asked her I'd be on program at my 
graduation. They said, hey, he wouldn't go to college. Hey, I went to the Brown State University. But not because of what I am or who I am, but it's all because of who I know. And I'm talking about Jesus. I thank God for mama and daddy are uh, bringing me to church. Well, sometimes they drug me to church. Most of the time they brought me to church and I was wanting to come. I thank God for them instilling in me the importance of knowing the man. Not only that, secondly, you have to get into their heart. Their heart. We must understand that every child also comes equipped with the capacity to love to hate, to cry, to laugh, to desire, to fear, and to hope. Thanks to the man, thanks to the form of a man in God. Parents, we must instill in the children the fear of not having Christ. is a friend to the old, he's a friend to the young as well. Yeah. Here we go. Young folk, you can be saved and still have swag. Yeah. Yes, sir. You can be a Christian and still be cool at the same time. You can be a praiser and still be popular at the same time. Yeah, you're right. Yes. My brothers and sisters, on my way back to that bed, I want to suggest to the youth, if you do not have a relationship with Jesus, if you don't know, now is a good time. Yes, sir. That's why we've been here all week, yeah. trying to introduce you to someone who can save your soul. Yeah. To someone who, when you feel like you want to throw in the towel, who, when you feel like you want to give up, there is someone who's there and is willing to aid and willing to assist, willing to care, willing to love, and willing to take care of you. And his name is Jesus. A life without him. Will become bitter, lonely, and hopeless. Don't let the excitement of your young age cause you to miss the focus because you worry about having a good time. Because you worry about playing. You're worried about pleasure. There's a time to play. There's a time to be serious. on the evil and meaningless activities and bad acts. Seek God now because you are needed in your life, yet that's why he sent his son to die for you. Even though my sisters and brothers Satan has a grip on the young people, Jesus is calling them out and he wants to remind them that he has a great work for them to do. Jesus is waiting on them and he's waiting on you and I to do what he commanded us to do and that's to train them up. Uh -huh. Parents, I want to say this. We can't, uh, we can't be down on our children. We can't expect them to know something that we have not taught. <laughs> we can't hold them accountable for something we have not uh, taught them. Jesus is waiting on you. You do know who he is, don't you? Jesus. Man of this man. Jesus. He is Abraham's sacrifice. Jesus, the one that can turn darkness into light. Jesus, the one that can restore hope. Jesus, the one that can restore strength when you're weak. Jesus, the one who can, who can, who can fulfill your dreams. He's your Savior. God loved you so much 
that he sent his son for you. And Jesus loved you so much that he picked up an old wooden cross. Good God in mind. And he washed up Calvary's his Yeah. My brothers and sisters, and he died. He died for you, for you, for you, and for me and everybody that's in here. And because he died, because he lives, because Christ went in the grave, got up on the third day morning, we can overcome some challenges that we, that we endure in life. Yeah. Our brothers and sisters, I'm done. But it's a lot of the schedule to come and pray. But I want to tell you. Now is the time where if you have been doing some stuff that you should not have been doing, if you have been being disobedient, if you have been uh, not following the rule, if you've just been doing what you want to do, now is the time you can get a fresh start. I don't know about you, but I thank God for Jesus. Yeah. Jesus works for the old as well as the young. Just like Big Mama and Mama can call on him, yes. the good news is you can call on him as well. Yes. You don't have to be out public. You can talk to the Lord for yourself and don't nobody even know you talk. Right. We have to get back. So what the Bible says, we have to train up our youth, train up our children, and the way that they should go. So when they grow up, when we pass away, when we fade out, they can come and carry this gone. They can come. We have doctors set up there. We have pastors set up there. We have nurses set up there. We have our, our teachers set up there. We have principals set up there. You can only be what God wants you to be. Whatever God has allowed you to be and whatever God places you to be in your life, that's what you can be as long as you're in the will of God. Amen.